All right. Fire away. Here we go. Coach Grassy. Hi, guys. Hey, Coach, just general thoughts on that one. That was, you know, all, all kinds of stuff going on there to end it the way it did on penalty kicks. You guys go into the Elite Eight for the first time. A lot going on there. Just what are you feeling right now? Thoughts on the game? Um, <laughs> been a bit of a bit of a whirlwind at the end with the, the penalties. And, you know, I felt like we should have won it beforehand. Uh, I think obviously their goal was clearly offside, um, you know, Kind of is what it is, you know. But I thought the guys battled really well, played really well. You know, two good teams because the, the, the momentum was back and forth. Um, but I thought we had some uh, fantastic chances to win. Um, you know, and obviously their goal should have been scratched off. So pretty happy with the performance. You know, take the penalties. All of assembly, best goalkeeper in the country, hands down. Um, you know, he struggled a little bit in the first half with his kicking, but not like not a problem because he's still brave enough to step up and continue playing playing those balls as the whole team. That's when we we, we flourished, right? It was we were passing the ball, keeping the ball, being brave, and they couldn't handle it, you know? And then it was foul after foul after foul, and the game slowed down and kind of broke our rhythm up. And um, obviously, Vito, they just kept kicking him until he couldn't play anymore. So I would have liked to see that dealt with a little bit more. Um, so we could have, you know, we could have won it in regulation. But overall, happy to win on penalties. You know, we, we, we practiced everything a lot. We print penalties are no exception. Um, so we were prepared for that. And then obviously, you know, Ollie's made two terrific saves and got a hand to a third one. So, and the rest of the guys kept the composure. Just, just proud. Just very proud. And look, that wasn't, that's not our goal. Our goal is not to beat the number one team. Our goal is to be the number one team. So this is over. We're done. Put it behind us. We're moving on to the next one, Georgetown in the lead eight. Coach, how do you put that into perspective? I mean, this is a huge win, if you will. I mean, it, it could be the biggest win in your career at this moment, but how do you, then turn that switch off and go play the next one, knowing you you just had probably the biggest win in your career as the Marshall coach. Sorry, uh, broken, breaking up on that one a little bit. Coach, I'll try again. If, um, if you would just put this in perspective, how do you just get ready for the next game, knowing you just beat the top team in the tournament? Uh, I know there's a lot of excitement there, but – it's pretty difficult to put that behind you and just focus on the next one, or is it? Uh, no, no, that's it. It's done. I mean, we've had big wins before, right? You, you beat Charlotte to, to win the, the conference again. Um, you know, these guys have all had big wins. They'll look from, like, world-renowned clubs, you know, and, and educations. They're, they're used to this stuff. Um, you know, the guys holding the holding the keys or blocking the doorways to, to, to success, they want you to feel – like it's an achievement to beat them, but it's we just played better than them, and we and we are a better team right now. So for us, it's it's about continuing that momentum, and then we prepare for Georgetown. We give Georgetown every respect. We scout them. We see their strengths. We see their weaknesses, and then we just do our thing when we go. We we're going to play, and I think today was a great training session uh, for the next game. You know, just looking at what we need to do. Look, we're not going to surprise anybody. We're going to try and pop the ball. We're going to try and keep the ball, um, and we're going to try and create chances. And, and you know, we might press. We might sit back. We might you know, slide the play one way or the other. But at the end of the day, you know, it's it's, it's kind of just, we're going to do our thing. We're going to continue with the process and just just move to the next one. <laughs> Coach, Milos had two glorious chances in the second overtime uh, and, the, and, and shot wide and high. Were you concerned that, you know, giving up those chances and not being able to, to convert on that would end up coming back and haunt you, especially as the shootout kept going? Um... No, I mean, I think it's it's just it's a, a great strikers have chances, right? He created both of those chances for himself with the dribble and with the movement. Um, obviously, one off a good uh, team defensive move. But he's going to create chances. He's a great striker. That's what they do. They, sometimes they score, sometimes they miss. He went bravely. You know, we talked about courage being key today. And he was brave on the shot. He tried to wrap it in the top corner both times. Um, you know, sometimes you score, sometimes you miss. You know, but it's, it's been an opportunity. So... It was, ne was never really too worried. Penalties are a little bit of a lottery, but like I said, we train and we train and we train and we train and we train them. So the guys know to get up there and, and take chances. And look, Yana has scored, what, like six or seven penalties in a row in his career. And then today's the day that uh, he misses. So, you know, it's going to happen and you just got to stick stick with it and just continue to, to do your thing. Thank you. Congratulations. Chris, how much did the experience of 
having been to an NCAA tournament before, before gotten to the Sweet 16 round before, how much did that help your guys as far as nerves and composure today? Um, you know, I think it was a, I think it was a big thing. Look, this is a mature group. You know, I trust them very much. Um, and, and their ability for, for them to kind of put the occasion into perspective. Obviously, everything is based on your experiences. You know, I've been to four Final Fours as a coach in Division One and Division Two, and you know, I was talking about that to them, like about the experience, and it's it's little things, you know, it's the little details. But most of all, it's like believing the teams that have already won a championship. They just they play to their normal level. You know, they don't try and do anything special. They just play, and I think that's the mentality that we've been able to show, um, you know, throughout this, you know, throughout this uh, tournament so far. And I think that everybody's experience helps them and helps them again. But I feel like, you know. This game will help prepare us for the next game. Same field, you know, against a against a team that uh, that won this competition last year, and you know we'll go in again. Like we said before, we're a better team. We're the better team, and we're going to try and play. We're going to try and enjoy the game and, and win it. Chris, tell me about Max's goal on the free kick. It looked really pretty on on the stream. Just what what was what did you see, and and is that the kind of thing you you've come to expect out of Max? It seemed like he had a pretty good strike on that one. Well, yeah. So he's in training, and training all the time, practicing free kicks. And he can go left, he can go right, um, you know. But we had a little bit of deception in there, which we haven't done in the previous uh, games. So Max has taken some really good free kicks, but the goalkeeper has been able to clearly see the ball. He's been able to read it. So, you know, we've we've kind of analysed and, and worked on, you know, maybe some of the distractions. And then Max and, and the guys came up with this distraction themselves. And um, you know, one guy in front of the ball, one guy sort of running up to the ball, uh, and just let him pick the side. So which side the goalkeeper was, and just went hard to the other side. And um, yeah, it's something we expect from him from training. And you know. Hopefully he gets another one uh, yeah, soon. Coach, uh, what was the determining factor in the lineup and the penalty kicks? Like, how did you decide, like, who was going to go first in the order in the penalty kicks? Probably probably taking about 20 or 30 penalty kicks each over the last, um, you know, the last few weeks in, in training leading up to uh, this tournament. So we've been charting everything. And then we looked at our best 10, most consistent. And then we asked the guys who are on that list, do you want to take one? And then who wants to take where? And, you know, we had a top five come through, but obviously, I mean, we had Excel sheets of, you know, the quality of the penalty, the speed of the penalty, the direction of the penalty, and just trying to see who had the biggest streaks and who was confident every time. Different goalkeeper. So we trained, but nothing nothing gets left to chance. So so we just trained it, and, and that was our best group. And so they were confident. They've done it a million times in training. Now it's a little different in the, in the uh, Sweet 16, but, you know, they've done it. Because the, the fans are, all the fans are following. Coach, you get Georgetown on Monday. Um, I know they were, on the, they were playing right before you guys, so I don't know how much you got to see, but tell us about Georgetown. Like, what do you look like? What are like, what are the strengths and weaknesses of Georgetown compared to you all? You know, I enjoyed, I watched the, the first, the first half. I've only seen them play once before. I watched them play against Seton Hall um, in the Big East final. Uh, and then I watched them play against Penn State. And I thought, you know, they were pretty, um, they're a pretty good possession team. They had some really interesting movements and, and some tactical adjustments as they went from defending to attacking. So, you know, we'll, we'll kind of look to manage that a little bit. And, you know, maybe they'll do something a little bit different uh, playing against us. But, you know, it's going to be a battle, I think, of two, two good possession teams. So, you know, we'll see who gets it behind. Coach, if you would, talk about the fan support you got today. I mean, that was an amazing showing for uh, the, the amount of fans that were able to attend. That was an amazing crowd today. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had the, the full 125, um, you know, there. It was amazing. I mean, that was our full allotment. You could just see all of the green across the stadium. You know, we obviously uh, won the support and battle as well, uh, which was great to see our, our, our fans travel. Um, you know, just gives us amazing support. Uh, and the guys just are able to kind of go that extra mile. Obviously, we had some guys sort of really beaten up, um, you know, throughout the game. But, uh, you know, they had the fans, one of those things that helped them continue to go on. And, and you know, we love every one of them for coming down and, and sharing us on like that. That all? We good? I think we're good, Coach. Guys, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Coach. You are. Thanks, Coach.